What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna prove some properties of modular congruence. So there are three statements on the screen right here. These are the three statements we're gonna prove in this video. So I definitely encourage pausing the video, reading these statements, trying to make some sense of them. And in fact, these are all three conditional statements that can be proven using the direct proof method. And the proofs really aren't that bad. You make your assumption you need to make, you unpack the definition, you figure out where you wanna go, and then you do some algebra to get there. There aren't really any tricks or like clever insights needed. It is kind of moving symbols using definitions. So I encourage you, if you're trying to get practice with direct proof or proofs involving modular congruence, Pause the video now, try some of these on your own. Spend at least five or 10 minutes on each statement, then you can skip around. The video will be time stamped up, so you can skip around, compare what you did with what I do, and it'll be a good time. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First, let's quickly review what does it mean to say A is congruent to B mod N. A video will pop up right now where I kind of introduced this idea, went through some examples, talked about these three definitions, proved they were equivalent. So if you have no idea what this means, first go back to that video, then come to this video. But just a quick review, this first definition, A and B have the same remainder when divided by N, I like to call this the intuitive definition, right? It's a really intuitive way to think about what modular congruence is, and it can be really helpful if we're just trying to quickly figure out whether two numbers are congruent or whether a statement is true, that sort of thing. But the second definition tends to be what is leveraged in advanced math courses. It's the primary definition, especially for writing proofs. It makes our lives a lot easier when writing proofs compared to like this first definition. So that's what I'm gonna use for the proofs in this video is this second definition. Hopefully you've seen this. Again, this is typically pretty heavily endorsed in like intro to proof, discrete math, those kind of classes. So again, these two are equivalent. I show that in that video. Go back and watch it if you don't believe me. We're going to continue moving forward with this n divides a minus b definition. So let's jump into the first example here. So anytime we're trying to prove a statement, really I encourage the first things we do are, first of all, make sense of the statement. Do we understand what this statement is saying, right? And then second of all, do we believe that this is true? Do we kind of see why this is true? So really, I encourage you to do that first before you jump into the proof, right? Because what this statement says to me is that if we have two numbers that have the same remainder when divided by n, then we can multiply each number by the same integer. And those resulting products will also have the same remainder when divided by n. I can go through examples, and I can even write sort of a more general argument using like, okay, well, what if a is q1n plus r? Then we could say b is q2n plus r since they have the same remainder and then reason sort of about what happens when i multiply them both by some constant c and convince myself that oh those resulting uh, products will also have the same remainder when divided by n so again i won't go through this for every single proof but i encourage you don't just write proofs also understand what the statements are saying and kind of try to develop some intuition for why they are true Awesome, let's jump into the proof. Again, we can use the direct proof method. This is a conditional statement. We can assume the if part of the statement is true, so I'm gonna suppose that A is in fact congruent to B mod N. So again, I'm applying the direct proof method. This is how I always do it. I look at the if part of the statement, I assume that's true, then I look at the then part of the statement because that's my goal. From this assumption, I want to show that it leads to this being true. And I always make a note of what it is I'm trying to show so I can keep my goal in mind. I want to show that CA is congruent to CB mod N. And this is for any integer C. So I'm already thinking in my head at some point in my proof here, I have to introduce an integer C as an arbitrary integer. Right. So what does it mean to, to show this? That's one thing we can think about. And we can kind of go back and forth between our assumption and what we want to show and think about what each of these things mean. Of course, when we do our final proof, we want to write it from start to finish in logical order, making sense. So maybe I'll start up here. What does it mean to say A is congruent to B mod N? Well, that means that then we'll just apply the definition of congruence. Then N divides a minus b and now we can apply the definition of divisibility right because if n divides a minus b then 
So what does that mean? That means that A minus B equals N times K for some integer K. So let's do a quick proof comprehension test here, ask a couple questions. How did I get from line one to line two? I applied the definition of congruence. How did I get to line from line two to line three? I applied the definition of divisibility, right? So right now I'm just applying definitions. So now it may not be clear how I'm gonna get to the CA's congruent to CB mod N. And so we're kinda gonna do a similar thing here. Let's play around with this. What does this mean? Well, this means that N divides the difference of these two numbers, CA minus CB, right? So again, just applying the definition of congruence and we can work backwards again and think about, well, what does this mean? Well, this means that CA minus CB equals N times K for some integer K. And if you don't like me using the same letter, I'll use L, even though this is probably all gonna be erased, right? Once I write my final proof. I'm just trying to think about how I can relate to what I have here to what I wanna show. And I think I've got it now, right? Because what I see is that if I can show that CA minus CB is equal to N times an integer, then from that I can say N divides CA minus CB, which is the definition of CA being congruent to CB mod N. So I think I'm really close to having what I need from here. All I need to do at this point is say, let C be an integer. And then what can I say? Then what? Then I can multiply both sides of this equation here by C. And hopefully you see why that's helpful because then I have CA minus CB, which is what I want to show, equal to N times K times C and k times c is an integer, so that's n times an integer. I have exactly what I want to show if I just multiply both sides by c. So let's go ahead and do that. Then what? Then a, let's see, I'll write it as ca, be consistent, then ca minus cb equals, what do I want to write it as? Well, I want to write it probably as n times an integer, so I'll emphasize that it's n times an integer by writing this. And then I'll say, so what does that mean? Well, so n divides CA minus CB. So I guess I could have kept this stuff. That's okay. So n divides CA minus CB. And again, that is because CK is an integer. Maybe I'll make a little note here. Uh, I'll do it for like that. There we go, a little symbol referring to CK. This is an integer, right? Integers are closed. If I multiply two of them, I get an integer. That's an integer. So we have CA minus CB is N times an integer, which by definition means that N divides CA minus CB, which by definition means that thus CA is congruent to CB mod N. So hopefully this made sense. And this sort of, I, I like these proofs in this video a lot because they reveal a lot of like strategic tips for proof writing about like making the assumption you need to make, writing out your goal, what it is you need to show. And sometimes you have to play around with the goal, with what it is you need to show, play around with it, unpack it, and figure out like how to bridge that gap between what your assumption is and what you want to show. So from this point, again, we concluded what we want to show. We have proved this statement. Let's move on to the next example. So with this statement, again, before we start writing the proof, make sure you think about what does this statement mean? What is it saying? And why is it true? Go through some examples, play around with it a little bit, then jump into the proof. So for the proof, I'm going to jump right into it. Again, direct proof method. We're going to assume that the if part of the statement is true and then try to show that that leads to the then part of the statement being true. So this if part of the statement is a conjunction, right? We're making two assumptions here. Suppose that A is congruent to B mod N and C is congruent to D mod N. All right, so now we can unpack this using the definition, but first maybe let's think ahead at our goal, right? I always like to jump from our assumption to the goal. What are we trying to show? Well, we want to show, I'll put it all the way down here, want to show, this will probably be erased later, that A plus C is congruent to 
b plus d mod n. All right, so this is what we want to show. So again, we can sort of play around with this, figure out how could we get from this assumption to this. We can also unpack our assumption, applying the definition. Maybe I'll jump, back, jump up and do that. So what do we get from this? Well, then let's just apply the definition of congruence. Then n divides a minus b and n divides c minus d. Awesome. All right, so what do those things mean? Well, let's apply the definition of divisibility. So a minus b equals n times k, and c minus d equals n times, I'll use a different letter here, l, and I'll just write for some k and l in the set of integers. Hopefully you can see this way over here. Awesome. All right, you can. All right, so this is what we got. I just use the definition of congruence, use the definition of divisibility, and now I'm trying to figure out how in the world can I get from this to what it is I want to show. So let's play around with what it is we want to show. Again, apply the definition of congruence, right? What does it mean to say a plus c is congruent to b plus d in mod n? Well, that has to do with the difference. So I may have to use two sets of parentheses here. Maybe I'll use a bracket, right? Because I want to show that a plus c minus b plus d, right, the n divides this. And now I can actually expand this out if I want to, like, in other words, uh, use the distributed property, get rid of the brackets, just have one set of parentheses and say, well, this is a plus c minus b minus d. Does this help me at all, right? What would this mean? Well, a plus c minus b minus d equals n times an integer is what I would want to show. So do I have an A, a C, a minus B, and a minus D up here? Let's see. Well, I have an A here. I have a C here. There's my minus B. There's my minus D. So I seem to have each term represented in these. So maybe what I should do is I should add these two equations, right? Because if A minus B equals N times K and C minus D equals N times L, then what I can say is A minus B plus... Right, so I'm adding a minus b plus c minus d is equal to, well, the sum of nk and nl. nk plus nl. And looky there what we can do. We can factor out an n. And then what do we have here? We have n times k plus l. k plus l is the sum of two integers, which is an integer. And so what I've just shown is that a minus b plus c minus d equals n times an integer. So is that related to what I want to show? Well, it's almost exactly what I want to show. I just need to switch some terms around here, right? I need to write a plus c minus b plus d, but all of that is exactly here. I can just do that in my next step here. Hopefully this is making sense. We're showing exactly what we want to show here. So, what do I have here? A plus C minus, so I'm factoring out this negative, B plus D equals N times K plus L. And K plus L is an integer, right? Since K and L are each integer, so I think this gives us exactly what we want to show. Because from here we can just conclude that then, then what does this mean? N divides, right, this long thing here, A plus C minus B plus D. And this by definition means that A plus C is congruent to B plus D mod N. So maybe you add one more sentence here at the end that I don't really have room for, but thus, right, A plus C is congruent to B plus D mod N, and that's the proof. So again, very similar strategy to the first statement. Make our assumptions, figure out what it is we want to show, right? Think about our goal and just figure out how do we get to our goal from our assumption and make sure our final proof is nice and follows logically and each step makes sense, and then we can explain why each step leads to the next and where each step comes from, that sort of thing. Awesome. Let's try the last example here.
if a is congruent to b mod n and c is congruent to d mod n, then a times c is congruent to b times d mod n. Almost the same as the last statement. In the last statement, we added a and c and b and d and said that those are congruent. This time we are multiplying a and c and b and d and saying that those are congruent. So very similar. And I think the proof is going to be a similar idea as well. So let's use the direct proof method. We're going to make this assumption. We're going to suppose that a is congruent to b mod n and c is congruent to d mod n. And then think about what it is we want to show. We want to show that AC is congruent to BD in mod N. Awesome. All right, so let's unpack our assumption here from this. What do we get? Well, by definition of congruence, this means that N divides A minus B. This should look very familiar to our last proof, right? Because it's the same assumption. And N divides C minus D. And that means what? So A minus B, right? Because N divides A minus B, we just now apply the definition of divisibility. This equals NK and C minus D equals NL for some K and L in the set of mixtures. Awesome. Hopefully looking very familiar. And now let's think about what we want to show and figure out how can we get from this to what we want to show. Because this time, stuff is being multiplied. And so I'm not entirely sure. It's not as obvious how we can get there. So let's write this out. What does this mean? Well, AC is congruent to BD mod N. It means that N divides A times C minus B times D. Which means that what? Let's see. A times C minus B times D equals N times some integer. Let's see, I've used K, L, maybe I'll use M, N times M, right? So this is what we want to show, that A, C minus B, D equals N times M. And let's think about how we can get there. I think maybe we need to solve for like A and C and multiply them together, right? Because I see A and C together in here. And I'm just thinking about how can I relate what I have here to a times c minus b times d. So I think let's try that. Let us try that. So a equals b plus n times k. And c equals d plus n times l. So again, I'm just isolating a and c. right? So I added b to both sides, added d to both sides. Now I'm multiplying them. So a times C, and let's see if this will help. I'm actually going to erase a little bit. What does A times C equal, and does it help me? Well, it equals B plus N times K times D plus N times L. And what happens when I multiply this out? I get BD plus... B times NL plus D times NK plus N squared KL. All right. Can you see all that? Okay, you can. Awesome. All right. How in the world am I going to get from this to what I want to show? I have AC equals, oh, uh, if I subtract BD from both sides then I definitely have AC minus BD. And then I just have to figure out how I can write that as N times an integer. So let's do that. Subtract BD from both sides. So AC minus BD. Yeah, this is going to work because there's an N in every term now. BNL plus DNK plus N squared KL. Right, there's an N in every term, so I can factor out an N. And I'm probably not going to have room to write the entire proof here, so I'm going to leave the last like two lines as an exercise. I can factor out an N, and what I'm left with is BL plus DK plus NKL. But this is okay, because 
These are all integers in here. So we have integers being multiplied together, added together, right? The integers are closed under multiplication and addition. So this entire thing is definitely an integer. And so what we've just written is that AC minus BD equals N times an integer, which means that N divides AC minus BD, which means that AC is congruent to BD mod N. So really we just need two more lines from here. The next line would be N divides AC minus BD. And after that, we'd say that by definition, that means that AC is congruent to BD mod N. So hopefully this proof makes sense. Hopefully you enjoy thinking through these proofs with me, right? I actually think through these as I go in these videos. So hopefully you enjoy that. Hopefully this was helpful. I like these proofs. They're fun. They're good introductory examples that really highlight some important strategies of kind of looking at the conclusion of our goal of what we want to show and unpacking it. So hopefully you found it helpful. Leave any comments below, any questions, like the video, subscribe, all that stuff. But most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see you all later.